In today's incident, we get a reminder that the rules of firearm safety are an always, always, always priority. My name's John Correa, I'm the host here at Active Self Protection, and I thank you for joining us for today's bonus badge cam lesson. It comes to us from Phoenix, Arizona, in fact, within a few miles of my home. Today's video is made possible thanks to the generous sponsorship of companies like LuckyGunner.com. Please head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. Officers see here a couple of people getting into a car that has been reported stolen, and so that officer's gonna call for other officers and they're going to follow this guy and look for a good place to pull him over. They're looking for a place that's not so, uh, you know, completely filled with people as that quick trip was, and they are going to find that here. We do have audio from the badge cams. Let's listen in. I shot one, bro. I shot one, bro. Uh, it, it. Hey, you good? Let's go. You good? I'm good. I try to get out, bro. He he tried to run me over. You good? Yeah, yeah, you good. I'm good. Yeah. Six twelve Edward. Uh, we try to get in front of him. He tried to run me over. I let one shot go. Nine nine eight. Fired. Last update I had is that police are still looking for the guy, the people that were in that car. Um, and you know, this is something that we're going to have to talk about and they didn't catch anybody on this one. And we're going to talk about that shot. Big oof on this one. And today, what the heck, let's start a little internet fight in good natured fun. In your firearm training, do you follow Colonel Cooper's four rules of safe firearms handling, or do you follow the NRA three rules or some combination thereof? Let us know in a comment, will ya? I'm gonna describe to you why I follow the three. So first things first, officers see that this is a stolen car that they're getting into, this and that, and they decide not to, to pull in right here and have a confrontation. And I know some people are gonna go, why didn't they just stop them right there before they had all the other problems? But I get it, this is a busy intersection. If you're not from the West Coast, you probably don't know what a quick trip is, but they tend to be a very busy convenience store and gas station. So the officer's saying, hey, I want some more people present, I get it. So let's think about what happens though as the officers are going. So we're gonna look first at the driver officer here. And I wanna note that the uh, officer in the passenger seat has his gun out already. And, and I know that, that we, when we talk about when does an officer and when can an officer draw their duty gun, and that's when they have a, a strong likelihood of thinking they may need it in the, the course of their duties. And I get it, this is gonna be a felony stop on a stolen car, okay, fine. You might very well need it, but I think the better choice here would have been to just have the gun in the holster and your hand on the gun, because you're gonna to need to pile out of the car and those kinds of things, and having that gun in the hand, every time you've got a gun in your hand administratively, you run a risk of having a problem with that gun, and clearly the officer did have a problem with that gun here, and I'm gonna show you why. Now, I do notice here that again, the officer's coming out, and what is going on here, what we see with the officer in the passenger side. He's got his gun out because he's gonna use it in order to try to take these guys at gunpoint. It's a felony stop, I get it, but these guys are running from him, and they have no problem hitting his door to try to get away from him. And so therefore, he does have two hands on the gun here as he's trying to get in there, but that's gonna get disrupted by the guys that are bashing the door in, trying to get away from him. That's exactly what happened there. Now, I do notice here that the driver officer, let's take a minute and think about this. He gets his gun out as well, because again, this is gonna be a felony stop. And then he recognizes in that moment, these guys are driving off, 
and he probably does not need to shoot him. So when we talk about can I shoot somebody, should I shoot somebody, must I shoot somebody, the answer here is probably not on the, on the must I shoot somebody for sure. On the should I shoot him, again, probably not because it, is he in imminent danger uh, of death or great bodily harm to the community? Probably not in that moment. So I think the officer did a really good job and made a good decision there to not press the trigger. His backstop wasn't great either, his fellow officers. So I think that was a good decision. Now let's think about our passenger officer some more. He's got his gun in his hand and we're gonna talk about what that means here. Is that what I wanna see is as you notice, He's got a gun in one hand here, and I do notice as well, he's maintaining good trigger finger discipline at this time. You can see the fact that you can, you can see the entire trigger guard, and you can see the fact that his finger is not on the trigger. He's wearing a pair of gloves, of nitrile gloves, so you can see the finger. We're gonna see it in a minute. So right now, he's good to go, but he's gonna put both hands on the gun like we saw earlier in order to try to take these guys at gunpoint, and as he does, that's gonna come back. So puts two hands on the gun, and now you can see right here that he still has his finger on the trigger. So he put his finger on the trigger early before he had made a decision to fire. Listen, you only, you always keep your finger high and on the slide or the frame until you've made a, a conscious decision to fire. And the big problem that we had here is because the officer was startled. I get that he's startled by the door getting smashed and he gets two hands off the gun. And now he's trying to do something with each hand. And, and because he left his finger on the trigger when he did that, he is gonna have what we call a sympathetic nervous reaction. So he's gonna work with his left hand to try to get that door back open again. And that's gonna cause his right hand to clench, including his trigger finger. And, and why I, I can tell you pretty definitively that this was a negligent discharge is look at the position of the gun here. That gun is not pointed at the car. He's not trying to shoot through his window into the car at what I think he could have considered potentially a deadly threat to him because it's trying to bash him in his door. But instead, notice the gun is pointed up high. He's trying to push that door open is what he's trying to do. And because he's trying to push that door open, it causes him to clench his hand and send that round up and away from the car rather than in it. So I don't think this one here is just a shot that he's trying to shoot a guy who's driving past him. I think this one was a negligent discharge. Uh, I think, again, caused by a sympathetic squeeze, which was caused by him leaving his finger on the trigger rather than really myelinating the process of getting his finger off the trigger if he's off the sights. He hasn't made a decision to fire, finger high and along the slide. And because he doesn't have that, that's why you hear him talk about 998, that's uh, police code for shots fired. And, and he says, hey, I let one off, man, my bad, I'm sorry. And you hear that on the badge cam. He did not mean to have a, a discharge of his firearm here. So this is what we call a negligent discharge. This is, is one that he did not intend. Now they're gonna get back in the car and do all their things or whatever. But the biggest lesson that I have here, I think it's a better thing for him to have left the gun in the holster and, and have his hand on his gun. And even if he uh, you know, took and defeated the safety mechanisms on the gun, so then that way he can get it out very quickly and into the fight when he's ready to, that would have been a better choice. So yes, does a police officer have a gun in hand a lot more often than a private citizen? Yes, because of their missions, mission, mission drives, tactics, techniques, and procedures. But you gotta do so in a safe manner. And when you do, you have gotta practice good trigger management and good trigger finger discipline. Because when you don't, negligent discharges like this happen. I'm not saying that this officer is not a professional. I'm not saying that this officer is not a good officer. I'm saying this was a mistake. So let's learn from it as we work around firearms to cover our ASP.